Welcome back to Dunedin, everyone. Carolyn, James, and uh, joined by Honorary Jedi Master, Jay's Pitcher. Force is strong in you. R.A. Dickey, how you doing, man? Doing good. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thanks yeah, so much. thanks for coming. Thanks so much for doing this. Uh, look, you finally got on the bump yesterday, uh, doing it for real for a couple innings yesterday uh, in Grapefruit League action against the Phillies. I mean, for you, coming into 2014, how did it feel out there? It was good. Uh, I'm in a lot different place than I was last year. Um, how? Well, my process isn't necessarily accelerated for the World Baseball Classic mm -hmm. as it was last year. And so I have a much easier time getting my body ready and can take my time to really get it where it needs to be. It's good. It seemed like a weird year last year because you come from being the Cy Young winner. Then you come to this team where it seemed that everything that could go wrong kind of did go wrong. What did you find you learned about yourself just last season? Well, you know, for one, pitching in the AL East is no easy task. I knew it wouldn't be. You know, I had the, when I signed my extension, you know, I had the opportunity to say no, but I wanted to see what I could do and in in what I consider the best division in baseball. So um, it's not an excuse, but it's certainly a learning curve for me. Um, how to keep the ball in the ballparks, another learning curve that, that uh, I feel like I got better at as the season went on. And I, and I felt healthier as the season went on, which was a big contributor and my late season success. You kind of joked about the AL East, you know, the biggest difference between the NL East and the AL East. I remember last year you had the quote, it means two more runs, essentially, for your ERA, essentially. But is it really that, like, when you're dealing with those lineups, I mean, what did you find? Is, is it the hitter specifically? What do you find the biggest difference? Well, I, th I think that's it. I think it's just you're dealing with, instead of facing Cole Hamels, I'm facing David Ortiz, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just a different animal altogether. But that's not an excuse. I mean, everybody's got to got to do it, and you got to find a way um, to be good. I mean, that's just it comes down to that. You got to find a way to be good, and and that's nothing for me to be afraid of. It's just a fact that I have to. Uh, there can't be any let ups. You know, when when in a National League lineup, you know, seven, eight, nine, you can take a breath. There are no seven, eight, nines in the American League. Sure. So you, you're always you always have to be on your game. Now, in the Dome, it seems like it's a lot easier for hitters, kind of hitter's paradise in there. When you're a pitcher coming into the Dome, what's the mindset like? Does it kind of get in your head a little bit? No, not necessarily. It doesn't get in my head. I, I, but I, I will say this. I will say that you kind of have to be good at managing regret. I mean, it, yeah. that's part of what baseball is about. It's about being able to turn the page quickly, being able to minimize your mistakes, and being able to hold what you don't do well and get better better from it. And for me, it wasn't so much the fact that I gave up 35 home runs, it was the fact that I gave up so many with runners on base. And that came from walking guys, and, and um, this year I look forward to having a little bit better control because I'm feeling better. Did you get used to the conditions a little bit more though as the season progressed in the Dome? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, and I've gotta be, look, you, in 2012 I had a great year. It was it was great. I had to be able to pitch inside, outside, it doesn't matter. It's the same. You know, uh, roof open, roof closed. Sure, I have a preference, but I've thrown great great games with the roof open. So it's it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Can you can you explain kind of the relationship with the because as a knuckleballer, you're you're such a unique pitcher. But the relationship that goes involved with the catcher the guy who's going to handle it, you know, you obviously have a relationship with Josh Tolley, but Eric Kratz sure. is starting to learn, and there might be a chance that he could be your guy. But, you know, at this time of the year, it strikes me as maybe a real critical time to develop that relationship in terms of handling such a unique pitch. Yeah, and that's I think that's why Eric's getting most of the reps is yeah. because we've never worked together. You know, Josh has caught me quite a bit since 2010. So he knows what he's going to um, get. So, yeah, so, and he knows there are so many little nuances in catching a knuckleball that, that people don't realize um, whether it's how I communicate with the catcher in the middle of an at-bat, uh, whether it's giving a head a head sign or a glove sign for the next pitch. I mean, it's just so much of its rapport and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So the more reps, the better for Eric. Now, we know, as as James alluded to at the start of the interview, that the, you are a big Star Wars fan. I think you actually you tweeted out this picture about a year ago yep. in your Star Wars onesie. You got that yep. for Christmas, I right? Got, awesome. I got that from Lucasfilm, actually. It was a good, it was a really? gift from him, yeah. James actually commented on your hardwood floors. He wasn't even looking at the onesie. <laughs> uh, Always a handyman. Now, I, I interviewed someone about a year ago, and I showed them this picture, and I think you might recognize them. Take a look at this. Uh, uh, thanks for your support. I wish I were getting a little bit of the merchandising on those onesies. 
You know who that oh, is, right? That is cool. I need a clip of that. That is a great surprise. That's yes. fun. I just showed him the onesie, and I said, uh, he's a big fan, plays for the Jays. Do you have anything to say to him? And then, yeah, he wants some of your money. He wants some money from the onesie sales. Yeah, well, that came from his boss, so I'm, I think I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had a chance to meet any of the, uh, the Star Wars guys? No, I, I, uh, I haven't, actually. I've been to Lucasfilm in San Francisco and Skywalker Ranch, and, of course, I'm a Star Wars nerd, so I, you know, I keep up with it. But I got this great gift last year, which was a, um, a picture that was signed from Princess Leia and her infamous outfit, which, nice. which was great. My wife had a problem with it, but she's going to have to get over it. <laughs> so what was more frustrating for you? 2013 or The Phantom Menace? <laughs> I think Jar Jar Banks was the most frustrating thing for me. But anyway, the 2013, look, it's, it's, only, it's only terrible if we don't learn from it. So there's a lot to get better from, and I think a lot of guys in the clubhouse. Hey, li good. listen, before we wrap up, you're, you're, uh, look, I'm a fellow Star Wars nerd as well, so I just want to play uh, I want to throw a couple of Star Wars quotes at you, and you tell me who said it if you can, okay? I'll try. All right, let's see what you got. You're not my father. Luke. Luke. Thank nice. you. That's help amazing. me want help me Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. That's Leia. Yes. Yeah. Laugh it up, fuzzball. That's Han. Nice. <laughs> All right. Come One on, more. Perfect four for four. Traveling through hyperspace ain't like dust and crops, farm boy. That's Han. Nice. Up. High five on yeah. that. All one, right. Buddy. Thanks very much. We really appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, glad to do it.